All right, factoring quadratic expressions. So I'm almost positive you guys have factored before. So hopefully this is review, but we'll see, I guess. So let's start with some vocabulary. Make sure you have your notes out. To rewrite an expression as the product of its factors is factoring. That's exactly the definition of factoring. Um, next. Involving the second and no higher power of an unknown quantity or variable is a quadratic. An algebraic expression consisting of three terms is a trinomial. Tri means three, okay? The common factor of each term in an expression that has the greatest coefficient and the greatest exponent is the greatest common factor. Yours is already filled out, but so the GCF for 4x cubed plus 20x squared minus 12x is 4x because 4 goes into 4, 20, and 12, and then x goes into x cubed, x squared, and x. Okay, next one. Factoring, again, the same definition as above. I don't know why it's twice, why it's put there twice. And then an, an expression in the form of a squared minus b squared, it can be factored as a plus b and a minus b. That is the difference of two squares, or just the difference of squares. Okay? So let's factor some of these using a GCF. So you always, always make sure it's in standard form first. Which with example A, it is in standard form. We don't have to worry about it. So let's look at our numbers now. One number goes into 80, 24, and 32. Hint, it's 8. <laughs> okay. So 8 goes into all those. Now we also need to look at our variables. We have x cubed, x squared, and x. So how many x's do we have in common? Common. Just one. There's just one x. Okay. So that's, wait, go back. I'm getting ahead of myself. That's what we're going to divide each of these terms by. That is our GCF. So we're going to divide our 80x cubed and the 24x squared and the 32x by 8x. So we're going to divide all of those out. Okay? Then 80x cubed divided by 8x is 10x squared. 24x squared divided by 8x is 3x. And 32x divided by 8x is 4 and then the D GCF doesn't just go away, it has to go out front. It will be wrong if you do not put that GCF out front, okay? I will mark it wrong. I will not give you half credit. Nothing will be completely wrong, okay? Let's do example C. So first, is this in standard form? I hope you shook your head and said no. It is not, so let's put it in standard form. So it's 7x to the 7th minus 7x cubed minus 63, 63x squared, okay? And then the GCF here, what goes into 7, 7, and 63? It is 7. Then how many x's do we have? If we have x to the 7th, x cubed, and x squared, x squared is what all of those x's can go into, okay? Or what goes into all of those. So that's what I'm going to divide each term by, 7x squared. <laughs> Oops, excuse me. So 7x to the 7th divided by 7x squared is x to the 5th. 7x cubed divided by 7x squared is negative, oh my gosh, why am I doing this, is negative x, because we have the subtraction right there, and then negative 63x squared divided by 7x squared is negative 9. And then the GCF doesn't just go away, it goes out front, and you're done. Okay? I just want you to look at example D real quick. So here, the GCF is 6, because... So 36, 30, and 54, 6 is the only thing that can go into those, and then we have x squared, x, and then no x, so no variables. Except for our leading term here is negative, which means it is a negative 6, okay? If that leading term is negative, then it's you pull out a negative. If the leading term is positive, you pull out a positive. I would write down what I just said. So if the leading term is negative, you pull out a negative. If the leading term is positive, you pull out a positive, okay? So when you divide, you have to divide each of these terms by negative 6, and then the negative 6 is what's going to go out front. I'm not going to do that one, but I just wanted to talk about it, okay? So let's go to these ones now. So these are factoring. There are steps here. I'm going to ignore the steps. I don't like steps because then you get too jumbled and you think like, oh, I have to do this, then I have to do this, then I have to do this which, I mean, you kind of do, but ignore the steps, okay? 
So I'm going to even ignore the factors some think. So you can cross those out, whatever you must do. I'm going to use these, or I'm going to factor these using the X. Some of you might have factored using the X. Some of you might have. This is the way I factor, and it's the easiest way I've found to factor in my whole math career. Okay? So let's look at example A. So we have X squared plus 14X plus 40. So I'm going to draw this big X right here. And then the top number is the constant. Remember, the constant is the one without a variable, so it's our last number. So it's 40. And so 40 is going to go in the top of my x. The bottom number is the middle term's coefficient. And remember, the coefficient is what comes in front of the variable, so that is going to be 14. Okay? Now, we need to find factors of the top number that will add to be the bottom number. So we need to find factors of 40 that will, so factors of 40 that will multiply to be 40 and will add to be 14. So let's just go through the factors. We have 1 and 40. We have 2 and 20. We have 4 and 10. And we have 5 and 8. And those are all the factors. Because 6 doesn't go into 40, 7 doesn't go into 40, and then we're back at 8. So we're done. Okay. Now let's add and subtract these and see which one will give us 14. So 1 plus 40 is 41. That doesn't give us 40 or 14. And then 40 minus 1 is 39. Still doesn't give us 14. So 2 plus 20 is 22, which isn't 14. 20 minus 2 is 18. Still isn't 14. 4 plus 10 is 14. So those are our factors that we're going to use. And those are what go in the sides of our x. Okay? Then the last step is to just put them in parentheses. So it's x plus 4 and x plus 10. The signs just stay with them. And that's your final answer. Okay? Pretty straightforward. Hopefully it's pretty simple for you. Let's do another 08. So just remember, you have to multiply to be the top number and you add or subtract, you can subtract, to be the bottom number. Most of the time when you subtract, it's because one of your answers is negative. Like one of the top or the bottom numbers is negative or they're both negative. Okay? Let's look at this one. So example D on your paper. So we have 36 plus 5x minus x squared. So first things first, we want this in standard form. So that's negative x squared plus 5x plus 36. And we want our leading term to be positive because it's, it's just easier that way. So I'm going to take out the negative, which means I need to change the signs of all my terms. So that becomes positive x squared minus 5x minus 36. Okay? Then we draw our x. And then negative 36 goes on top because our constant goes on top. Negative 5 goes on bottom because the middle coefficient goes on bottom. And then you need to multiply to be the top number and add or subtract to be the bottom number. So I'm going to write out the factors of 36. I have 1 and 36. I have 2 and 18. 3 and 12. 4 and 9. And 6 and 6. Okay. I'm going to ignore the signs for now. It needs to be a negative 5, but let's add and subtract these until we can just get 5. Because if we can get 5, we can get negative 5. So let's look at the first factor. 1 plus 36 is 37, does not help us. 36 minus 1 is 35, still doesn't help us. 2 plus 18 is 20, nope. 18 minus 2 is 16, no. 3 plus 12 is 15, 12 minus 3 is 9. We're getting closer, but we're not there. 4 plus 9 is 13, 9 minus 4 is 5. So we know that it's going to be 9 and 4, okay? But we need it to be a negative 5. So we're going to do 4 minus 9, and that will give us our negative 5. Then when we put those numbers in the side, we have 4 and we have negative 9. Okay? Because 4 times negative 9 is negative 36. 4 plus negative 9 is negative 5. Golden. All right? So then we just put them in the parentheses. So it's x plus 4 and x minus 9. The only thing we're forgetting is that negative that we pulled out at first, and that's our final answer. Okay? Hopefully this makes sense. If you factor a different way, I am completely fine with that as long as you're getting the same answers as me.
okay? So we're gonna skip this one for now. It's basically what we did at the very beginning of this video. So if you wanna do them, go for it. If not, I'm fine with either way, okay? Let's factor the difference of squares. So that's where it's a squared minus b squared equals a plus b and a minus b, where a squared is the first term, b squared is the second term. So let's just do an example. I think that's the best way to get this. So 16x squared minus 81. So a squared is 16x squared, b squared is 81. That means that a is the square root of 16x squared and b is the square root of 81, which is a is 4x and b is 9. Okay, then you just put them in the parentheses. So it's 4x plus 9 and 4x minus 9. And that's it. These are easy to factor. These are one of the easiest things to factor. Okay, let's do it. Example B. So A squared is 25x squared. B squared is 36, which means you have to take the square roots of those to find A and B. And A is 5x, B is 6. So it's 5x plus 6, 5x minus 6. Okay? We're not going to do C. Let's do D. So this is a sum of squares and not the difference of squares. And we're gonna go through this a little bit later, but I want you guys to be, to see it too. We're not, this isn't necessarily gonna be on this test or anything, but I want you guys to look at it and know what we're talking about, okay? So first, a squared is still thir the first term. B squared is still the second term. So a squared is 36x squared, b squared is nine, which means you take the squares to get a and b, and a is six x, b is three. Okay, the only difference here is when we put them in the parentheses, we have to put the i with it. So it's going to be 6x plus 3i, and then 6x minus 3i, okay, because it's imaginary. Because if we were to do this just solving for x squared, you would have to subtract the 9 over, and then divide by 36, and you're taking the square root of a negative number. When you take the square root of a negative, you end up with an i. You end up with an imaginary number, Okay. Okay, last ones. So we're factoring perfect squared trinomials. So I'm just gonna tell you right now, all of these are perfect squared trinomials. Usually you're just gonna have to kind of guess if they are or not. They're, so the way you can kind of guess and kind of check is we know that a squared is 25x squared, b squared is four, and those are both perfect squares, right? So you take the square roots, a equals five x, b equals two. We know the middle term is 2 times a times b. So 2 times a times b is 2 times 5x times 2, which is 20x, which is what is in the middle there. So when we factor this, it's just 5x minus 2 squared. All done. Super simple, super easy. Okay? On b, so a squared is 64x squared, b squared is 1. So a is 8x, b is 1. 2ab is 2 times 8x times 1, which is 16x, which is what our middle term is. So it's 8x minus 1 squared. Voila, you're all done. Okay? You can do the last one if you need more practice. This is the answer. It's 2x plus 7 squared. Okay? So please take the quiz, and I will see you guys tomorrow.